Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video, we're going to be installing macOS 11 Big Sur inside of VMware Workstation. Installing macOS inside of VMware is no easy task, as Apple really doesn't want you running its operating systems on hardware or virtual machines that's not theirs. So in this video, I'll be walking you through each step of how to install macOS Big Sur inside of VMware, and we'll try to get everything working. Now this video is meant for Intel CPUs as virtualizing macOS on AMD is a little bit different, however, a, however this video will be mostly for Intel CPUs. I'll be using an Intel Core i7-10700K, however if you have something older or newer it should be able to work. However I would not recommend trying to virtualize macOS Big Sur on a Core 2 Duo, I think that would be a little bit too far. So the first thing that we need to do is actually install Unlocker. On previous releases of VMware, macOS was automatically unlocked and you were able to install it. However, when Apple introduced APFS, that option went away. What Unlocker does is it basically allows you to select macOS 10 and installs the proper bootloaders for macOS. Before running this application, I personally recommend going into Task Manager and disabling every single thing that says VMware. And make sure that there's no tray process running. When we run this, we really want to make sure that VMware is shut off and nothing is running, so it really can't interfere with the unlocking process. Once we've extracted the zip file, we're going to go ahead and open the folder and go ahead and run unlocker.exe. From here, right now, it's installing everything into the VMware directory. It's downloading files, it's installing files, and it's really unlocking that. It's downloading a Darwin ISO, which basically allows macOS to boot, and it's running through all of this. So this may take a while depending on your internet connection, so kind of sit back and wait for this to download as this is just over half a gigabyte. Alright, and once the unlocker patch has been installed to your computer, it'll go ahead and say press enter to quit. So now we can of course press enter to quit, and now we're done with unlocker. Now we can go ahead and find VMware and go ahead and launch it. As long as VMware launches successfully, we should be fine. Now we're going to go ahead back to home and create a new virtual machine. Again, just going with typical, and then where you need to select our Big Sur ISO. You can find this download link in the description as well as the download link for the unlocker file. So of course, I've already extracted the Big Sur ISO, so we're going to go ahead and select that. Once we click next, now we'll see a new option called Apple Mac OS X. Of course, this is your standard Mac OS, and we're just going to go ahead and select Mac OS 11.0. We don't have version 11.1, .1, however, we may be able to update that later. So going ahead and selecting macOS 11.0, we can hit next and just let it name it that. You, you should choose at least 80 gigabytes of internal space, however I recommend don't go below 60. 80 should be just plenty and if you plan on installing a lot of apps, go higher, but 80 should be just enough. Before we do anything, we're going to go ahead and need to open the VM directory by right clicking on the VM and clicking open VM directory. And it should automatically select the VMX file, however if it doesn't, find this VMX file. From here, we're going to right click on it and then open with, choose another app, and we are just going to open this in Notepad. Now here, there's a whole bunch of properties that allow the VM to really know what it is. At the bottom of this, we're going to add a new line and paste in the properties on the bottom that I've linked in the description. Now mine were formatted weird, so I'm just going to have to backspace these a little bit. But just like that, we've added all these things. This is basically saying the SMC version is zero, reflect host true, that our model is a MacBook Pro 14,3, and this is our macOS board ID. From here, we're just going to go ahead and save this, overwrite the existing VMX, and go ahead and close it. Now we can go ahead and customize the properties for macOS 11. Four gigabytes of RAM and two processor cores is enough, but it's the minimum. We should really be aiming for either 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM and at least 4 processor cores. However, that's what I recommend. You can do whatever you want or whatever your system has. Once our VM has been configured, we can go ahead and click power on this virtual machine and just hope that we see the Apple logo. And yet again, here we see the Apple logo and now we are booting the macOS 11.0 installer. Alright, so once our virtual machine has booted into the installer, we can go ahead and select our language, which is of course English, and go ahead and click this arrow. Now you, you may notice that our mouse is really laggy, and that's really because we don't have any hardware support enabled. There's no video acceleration, no graphics acceleration, so this is going to be a little bit laggy until we install that and get that all set up. 
So before we can go ahead and install macOS, we're going to have to open Disk Utility. We've created our virtual hard drive, however, we really haven't done anything else. So we need to go ahead and select our VMware Virtual SATA and go ahead and then click Erase. Now we could go with APFS, however, I just recommend going with macOS Extended Journals and just naming it something like Mac OS. Now we can go ahead and click Erase and erase our virtual hard drive and make it into simply our macOS base volume. That's all we need to do in Disk Utility. So now we can click the X, and now we can move up to install macOS Big Sur. Now we can just run through this like we're installing Big Sur on a real Mac. Go ahead and select our macOS disk, and then click continue, and we're done. Now we are installing macOS Big Sur onto our macOS partition. This may take a while, even though it only says 15 minutes, it's going to run through these 15 minutes, then restart, and then really start installing. So we'll be here for a little bit longer, maybe sometimes 30 minutes to an hour, so go ahead and just run this in the background. You can unmaximize this and run it in the background. All right, so it's been about 30 minutes since I've selected that and installed macOS, and now we are finally inside of the Big Sur setup. Our mouse is still a little bit laggy, however, once we install VMware tools, we'll be able to fix that right up. So now we're just gonna go through the setup like we would on a real Mac. So we'll go ahead and click continue, and we're gonna just go ahead with these language settings. We don't really need accessibility because this is just a standard VM, so we go ahead and just click not now. And now we are done with our setup and our installation. It's now time to install VMware tools and hopefully get graphics acceleration set up. All right, so we are here on the desktop right now. There is no dock for some reason, and I can, everything is just being really laggy right now, which, I mean, I guess it's totally fine. Um, we can expect this from Mac. Um, I'm not sure why that's in a different language, but just for now, we're just going to force restart the virtual machine um, just to try and fix that. I'm honestly not entirely sure why I didn't have a dock, but we're just going to restart the virtual machine, log back in again, and hopefully that'll fix it. All right, so we are now back inside of macOS, and we actually have a dock. There are some things that say they're missing. Um, however, this I'm not actually sure why. I'm not sure why the day is in a different language, however the entire rest of the operating system seems to be in English, so I'm not too worried about that date, we can of course change that later. Now well, you may notice that things are very not responsive, some things are laggy, um, things like that. So to do that, or to fix that, we're going to simply install VMware tools, and to do that we're just going to go to VM, install VMware tools. So we're just going to have to go in and eject the Big Sur installer ISO and now go ahead and install it again. Now we're gonna go ahead and just launch the install VMware tools file and go through this. So just go ahead and click continue. Again, we're just gonna ahead and enter our password for the installation. Now, when we get these, we're just going ahead and click okay. We're going to worry about those later. However, the installation has failed. So that was not supposed to happen that way. We're just gonna go ahead and go to security and privacy and try to fix this issue. So this is where our problem is. So we're going ahead and unlock our settings just by clicking the lock at the bottom. And we're going to go ahead and allow system developer VMware Inc to install applications. And to do this, we're gonna to need to restart a machine. Now, when we restart our VM, we'll be able to install VMware tools onto it. All right, so now that we've restarted, we actually are inside of macOS with VMware tools installed. So I guess we really don't have to allow or reinstall it. We can of course try, but now our mouse is fully responsive and it runs around the screen very smoothly. Hopefully other UI elements do this. Um, that was not very responsive. Um, we might have to install it again, but we are in full screen which makes me wonder if we need to. All right, so now that we've restarted back into VMware, we can go ahead and log in, and everything looks to be a little bit more responsive now. So we've successfully installed macOS 11.0 inside of VMware Workstation. This was obviously a little bit easier than I would have expected. However, it works pretty well, and and it works pretty well. Some things are a little bit laggy. However, I'm sure we can find a way to fix that. It really depends on what computer you have. I really don't think macOS Big Sur is meant to be ran on a 10700K because I really don't think any Mac shipped with a 10700K. 
Um, only really 9th gen Intel processors made it into MacBooks and Macs. But with a 10700K, we were at least able to get it installed. And I'm sure if we kept researching, we could really find a way to fix this glitching thing. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you're new around here, as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations.